Hello and welcome to today's Pre Libra presentation brought to you by the Diabetes Technology Network. Today's presentation is about daily traces. My name is Geraldine Gallen. I'm one of the diabetes specialist nurses at King's College Hospital London where I lead the type 1 diabetes service there. I'm also one of the DTN committee members and I'm also a Daphne educator as well. And here are my disclosures. So here are the learning objectives for today's presentation. So we want you to have a better understanding of what the daily information means from your Libra, Libra receiver or phone. A better understanding of the trend arrows, um, how they relate to your daily blood glucose levels and whether you need to take any action. Feel more confident about how to reduce the glucose variability, something I know is very important to a lot of my patients and have the confidence to look at the daily traces and understand what insulin is working and when so that you can make the right changes and make the right choices in, the, in your day-to-day decision-making. So here is an outline of the presentation. So first of all, we're gonna look through the daily reports. We're gonna have a look at what the arrows actually mean and how you can use them day-to-day. -day. We're gonna have a look at what insulin is working and when. We're going to have a, have a think about having a plan. So when we start swiping with our Libra device, or if you're already doing that, we want to avoid any anxiety or confusion or concern about what to do next. So we're going to go through a few scenarios um, for you to think about and then look at and find the answers in the, in the upcoming modules that we've got presented for you. So let's have a look at the Libra screen to start off with. And I've got to say, um, in comparison to finger prick testing, my patients love looking at the data that they have on this screen. So not only do they have their target blood glucose levels um, with the direction of change arrows, they also have at the bottom of the screen um, what their blood glucose levels have been doing, so the patterns are trends, and they also have that against the target level. So the patients can very clearly see day to day what choices that they've made and where they've seen the fluctuations in their blood glucose levels and possible causes for them. So what is your plan? When you start to get your Libra receiver, it's really worthwhile just taking some time, just looking at the data. And what a lot of patients do is they actually spend the first two weeks just reviewing the blood glucose levels, looking at the causes for the rise and falls in the blood glucose levels, um, and understanding some of the data. And what's really important is that you do start to think about having a plan for that data. So how will you react to the blood glucose levels um, and the arrows before a meal? or two hours after a meal? How can the Libra sensor be used during stress or illness? How will you think about managing um, exercise with the extra information that you've got? What will you do when you suddenly see postprandial rises where your blood glucose levels are suddenly quite high after a meal? What action will you want to take? How confident do you feel about that action? How will you respond to the overnight trends in your glucose levels when suddenly you're seeing data that you hadn't seen before? Now we will discuss all of these in the forthcoming modules, but it's really important to think about um, what plan and what scenarios you may come across. And thinking about the self-management skills that you've been taught in your type one education, such as Daphne. So personal aims, and again, trying to think, at, think about what you want to get from your Libra download. What are the reasons that you have decided to use a Libra device? What are your personal goals? And what does success of those goals look like? If you've decided to go onto the Libra device to prevent hypoglycemia, it could be that you can use some of that data by looking at the percentage below target, for example, to show how that has been successful. So what does success look like for you on the Libra device? Preventing hypos, again, you'll be able to use some of the data that you get from the Libra device to see if that's working well for you. Better management of exercise. Are your blood glucose levels better managed before or after exercise? If for you it means less finger stick tests, but equally more information because you're able to scan more frequently, 
Um, that may also lead then to less variation in your blood glucose levels, which then in it, on its own can lead to better quality of life, um, which what we're all aiming for is to reduce the risk of complications. But for you, that could be something else. So again, what is your personal goal? What are your aims for using the Libra device? So reviewing the trends is an important part of diabetes self-management and a step towards achieving those diabetes goals with Libra. But it's really important that we scan regularly and we do advise that you're scanning the Libra device at least over 10 times per day so that you can look and reflect upon the causes and actions that you've taken what's worked well and maybe what's not worked so well, moving forward so that you're developing and building upon those self-management skills. Remember, this is only part of your diabetes journey and will help you achieve those goals and outcomes that you want to be able to achieve. We also need to look at the patterns and trends and we can do that by looking at the daily graphs and the daily patterns um, reports that you can get from your Libra device to help you achieve this. Daily graphs, this is where we can look at your Libra readings on one individual day on a 24 hour graph against your target ranges. Here the user will be able to clearly see the rises and falls in the blood glucose levels against the target range, helping you work out the causes for those rises and falls. Here the user was able to look at his day-to-day -day patterns and trends and possible causes for that. He worked out that if he moved his insulin from during his meal, 10 to 15 minutes before his meal, he was able to quite quickly reduce some of the fluctuations that he was experiencing. He was also able to look at his hyperavoidant snacks um, as he was often over treating and again causing hyperglycemia. The good thing about the daily graph is immediately you can see the effects of some of the changes that you have been making. So again, here he was able to see that by moving his insulin time, he could quite easily keep more of his blood glucose levels within target. He actually did find that he had to also reduce his background insulin as he was still having to eat to cover his insulin. Daily patterns. This is very similar to the daily graphs that we've just seen, but this is actually where um, a, a number of days, it could be seven, 14 or 30 days, are plotted onto one graph. So what you're seeing is the daily patterns and trends through exercise or your insulin regimes all plotted onto one graph. And again, this goes over a 24 hour period. The data, uh, the graph shows the median line in the dark blue against also your target range. And again, helping you to clearly see areas of huge fluctuation or areas of hypo or hyperglycemia. These will be dealt with again in more detail in some of our other modules. So what do the arrows tell us? Now that we've had a look at some of the graphs, we need to be able to, to understand better what the arrows is telling us so that we can make the right changes um, in our insulin requirements, in our exercise or in our food. Using the glucose value and the trend arrows allows you, the user, to decide whether you need to take a correction, knowing informed choices about what action to take. Using the direction of change hours, arrows allows you to reduce that daily variability. It allows you to make the right dose adjustment. And again, dose adjustment for correction with arrows will be discussed in a later module. Here you can clearly see the five arrows that you would get when you're swiping with your Libra. The first arrow goes directly up, showing that there's a, uh, the blood glucose levels are rising quite quickly. The second arrow, a directional up arrow, shows that the blood glucose levels are rising. A flat arrow generally states that there is some change in the blood glucose levels, so that might be something that you want to keep an eye on, but not of huge concern at that moment in time. A directional down arrow shows that your blood glucose levels are falling, and an arrow going um, straight down will show that your blood glucose levels are falling relatively quickly. But what does that all mean? So here we've got the arrows on the left-hand side of the column, and here we've got the information provided by Libra showing how much that blood glucose level is moving per minute. 
But what we want to do is make that information more valuable, more useful on a day-to-day -day basis. So in the third column, what we can see is how long it's going to take for your blood glucose level to change by one millimole. So if you've got one arrow going directly up, we can give an, uh, give an estimation that it's going to take on average seven minutes for your blood glucose levels to move by one millimole. A directional up arrow shows that it's going to take approximately 15 minutes to move by one millimole. A flat arrow, again, it's more unlikely that you're going to see much change in those blood glucose levels over the next 20 minutes. A directional down arrow will show that the blood glucose levels will take about 15 minutes to move by one millimole. And an arrow going straight down will show that it will take on average seven minutes. In the far hand column to the right, it will show how much it will change in the next 30 minutes, which a lot of users who've used um, this information has found quite useful. So if you've got one arrow going directly up, it will give you an idea that the blood glucose levels are going to be moving by at least three millimoles in the next 30 minutes and possibly more. One directional up, up arrow will mean that the blood sugars are moving by at least two to three millimoles in the next 30 minutes. One straight arrow going across, there could be a change of around two millimoles in the next 30 minutes. So again, could be something that you may still want to keep an eye on. A directional down arrow will show that your blood glucose levels again are moving by about two to three millimoles in the next 30 minutes. And a down arrow, again, showing that the blood glucose levels um, will be moving by at least three millimoles, if not more, over the next 30 minutes, which is quite vital information as, again, if you're going to drive or go into a meeting and you want an indication of where your blood glucose levels to be. And it could be that you need to take action now to avoid any problems later on. So for us to be able to take informative action, we also need to know what insulin is working and well and when. In order to use the Libra data effectively, it is important to be aware of what insulin is having the biggest effect at that time. So it's really important to assess the background insulin and quick acting insulin requirements. As part of Daphne, we're taught how to do fasting tests and this can be an integral part of someone's diabetes management. A fasting test is where we, we take a fasting period, which can be either missing a meal or um, four hours after a meal or even the overnight period, where we can then see if the blood glucose levels are staying in a steady state in the absence of any insulin or, or um, carbohydrates. Here we can see on the glass the ideal scenario of what we would be wanting to see from our background insulin in a fasting state, again, without any carbohydrate, without any insulin, would hope to see a nice steady line, a change of no more than 1.5 millimoles per hour. Here we can see what happens when there's too much background insulin on board. The red line shows us what's happening with the background insulin in the absence of quick acting insulin and carbohydrate. Not enough background insulin, the black line shows what might happen in, again, the absence of any insulin, quick acting insulin or carbohydrate, if there's not enough background insulin on board. So assessing quick acting insulin, with the support of the Libra data, you are able to assess how well the insulin covering the meal is working or if action is required to bring you back into target. If glucose levels are above target and continue to rise two to three hours after your last bolus, you can consider a correction um, and this will be advised in our bolus module. If you are experiencing hypoglycemia within one to three hours of your quick acting insulin bolus, it is likely that the bolus covering the previous meal was too much. And again, the action for this will be covered in the bolus module. So having the knowledge of which insulin is working will help avoid problematic blood glucose levels and reduce the variability and help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve using your Libra device. But again, given all these scenarios, it's really important that you have a plan. We now have a lot of a lot more information that you than what you would have previously had doing finger prick tests. 
and to reduce any panic or anxiety, it's really important that you have a plan for coming across various different scenarios. We're going to look at a couple of scenarios now and the idea of these scenarios is not to answer them directly with you now but these will be answered in the forthcoming modules. The idea of this to is assess your confidence levels in what you would do in the given scenario. So for example, the scenario one, a day out with friends and doing more exercise than usual. You are just getting into the car to drive home. Journey should last approximately 90 minutes, but that doesn't include any delays that you may occur with traffic. What action would you take? How confident do you feel addressing that scenario now? What does the blood glucose level mean in relation to the DVL, DVLA safety guidance? We know that the blood glucose levels needs to be above five before driving legally. What does the arrow mean? Given that the arrow's in a downward direction, where will that bring you in 90 minutes? Is there any action that you need to be doing now? Scenario two, you've been using the Libra now for two weeks and are starting to get extremely frustrated with your blood glucose levels. You are needing lots of corrections, but also having to treat more hypos. The data that you get from the Libra is really useful. Looking at the graph, what is causing the fluctuations and what changes could you think of making? This is quite a common scenario that we do find with some um, new Libra users in that sometimes they find that they're chasing their blood glucose levels. What tests could you do to see if the insulin is working with you in the data that you're getting from your Libra? Would you consider doing a fasting test? How are your corrections working? Are the corrections bringing you down too much um, following a bolus? Or are you having to also correct quite frequently with carbohydrate to bring your levels up? And what is that doing? And by going through the modules that we have put together via the DTN, this will help you answer these scenarios where hopefully you can come back and have a look at them and see if your confidence level rises. Scenario three, it's bedtime. You had your evening meal about half past seven in the evening. You've just scanned with your Libra and you're pleased with the blood glucose level, but you've got a downward arrow. What does that arrow mean? Where will your blood glucose level be in, in 30 minutes time? Have you got active insulin on board still at that time? What action would you be taking, if any? Do you need to take any carbohydrate? Scenario four, you've just woken and you've scanned your Libra. Do you need to confirm with a fingerprint test that you are hypo? What action would you take now if you were? What are the possible causes for that hypo? Was there anything that could have happened the previous evening? Exercise, alcohol, that could have caused that reason for the drop in your blood glucose levels? How confident do you feel we're dealing with that blood glucose level at that time? And how confident do you feel we're dealing, dealing with the causes for that low blood glucose level. So in summary, what are your aims and goals for using the Libra? And what does success look like for you? The importance of scanning regularly. You need to be able to scan at least 10 times to, per day to not only collect the data, but so that you can then analyze your own data to look at causes and effects in your blood glucose levels to help reduce the glucose variability. Look at the graphs and data that are provided to help you on your diabetes journey. Have a plan for the different scenarios that you come across. And remember that this is only part of your diabetes journey and it is a learning journey. So in conclusion, using the Freestyle Libra allows the user to see patterns of hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia and areas of greater variability. The wealth of data helps us understand the trajectory of our glucose levels, the effects of certain food, behaviors, and activities on the glucose levels. The data helps us identify and avoid hypo and hyperglycemic events, reducing glucose variability, and ultimately improving your quality of life. Thank you very much for listening today.